The focus of the presentation today is on building compliance roadmaps. So I'm kind of presenting it in the context of what are our roadblocks to those um, to that compliance roadmap? What's the purpose of the roadmap? Um, what Skillcast's approach is? And then putting that all into context. Um, I've spoken recently with one of my clients who's a, a a mining precious metals company um, called Fresneo. They're based over in Mexico. And I had a, a chat with them recently where they gave some really valuable insight into how they're using compliance roadmaps, how they're working with Skillcast to do that and the impact that it's had on the business. So I thought that would be really helpful to share with you all today. So um, quickly running through, um, obviously in the context of compliance roadmaps, it sounds pretty self-explanatory. Essentially, we're saying, how do you get the learners from point A to point B? But if you think about it more widely, it's not just how do we get them from point A to point B. Point A being, you know, it may be a new compliance initiative. It may be a new business initiative that impacts either a new regulation or something along those lines. Not only how do we get them from point A, which is potentially they don't have knowledge or you need them as much as we don't like to think of compliance as a tick box exercise, you need to make sure that they have actually ticked those boxes to get to point B. But in the wider context as well, how do we ensure that they've got the tools and that map to be able to actually actively repeat that and essentially make that journey from point A to point B time and, a time, time, and time again, but in a very safe and also efficient manner as well. You want them to have the tools to be able to do that quickly, efficiency, um, with a key point on efficiency rather, and also just making sure that they can repeat that so that you are kind of minimizing your risks there as well. So quick show of hands, how many people here have come across these, what we refer to as our roadblocks in any compliance initiative that you've had, whether it's been one or a handful of these? I'm seeing a few people nod heads, yeah. I thought that might be the case. So Fresneo are no different, and we'll see that in just a second as well. But the reason that I've um, got a few of these examples on the screen is that these are some of the more common themes that we see in our conversations with clients as to, you know, what are the challenges that you face? What are the, um, you know, the pain points that either learners express or staff internally come back to you within your team? How do we get around that? Are these the blockers in our roadmap? to actually get from point A to point B safely? And how can we mitigate that as much as possible? So I'm conscious of the time, so I won't go into all of these in too much detail, but as you can see, they're kind of the common themes on there. So you've seen this, this visual on screen during Simon's presentation as well, where we spoke about the Swiss cheese model. Um, as you've kind of seen, this is where Skillcast kind of looks at compliance roadmaps and compliance more widely, various initiatives, and we try and facilitate and help our clients come up with solutions where we are kind of, you know, mitigating the risk by taking into account the Swiss cheese model and saying, okay, well, yep, you've got your training in place, but what other requirements do you need? What other things are the FCA or other regulators looking for? Which other areas um, are learners feeding back on? Are they saying that things aren't as engaging as they could be? What other areas could you be looking at there? So this is just to quickly remind you before we do a deep dive into the case study for Fresneo as well. So just to quickly introduce you to Fresneo, we've been working with them um, for around 10 years or so. As I said earlier, they're based over in Mexico. They are a precious metals mining company. Um, and they have a very heavy focus on responsibility. And the context of what I wanted to present today is how we've been working with them to help them implement their code of conduct. So within their code of conduct, they have a very heavy focus, obviously, on regulation. So that covers things like modern slavery, anti-bribery, um, all of those kind of things. They also have responsibility and focus on that with regards to kind of more um, social aspects as well. So their local communities, the environment, um, safety and sustainability. So all of those key things that come under ESG, for example. Um, as a business, obviously, they operate in a uh, quite a high risk area, I think it's fair to say. And as a result, their code of conduct, as you've seen there, encompasses many things. So what they've tried to do is ensure that from their learner's perspective, they are making it as easy as possible for people to access the information that they need, while also making it as engaging as possible for them as well. So I'll quickly flick to the next slide here. You'll see we saw this earlier, but in this case, I've highlighted a few of the um, key areas that I want to focus on today. So with regards to 
specifically what Fresneo are doing. They work with um, us to host their training on the Skillcast portal, which obviously then can link onto other systems. We spoke earlier about the importance of integration and how it needs to be easy for people to access. So you're taking away the roadblock that we saw earlier about inconvenience and complexity. They've managed to remove that by making sure that they have as much as they can in one place for learners. So you can see there that we've got the learning management system and attestations highlighted as well. What Fresneo have done in the context of their code of conduct they have e-learning courses on the regulatory topics that we spoke about. So they've got a code of conduct, um, wider informational training piece. They've got anti-bribery and modern slavery training as well. What they've also done, which may or may not be relevant to a few of you here today, because they work on an international basis, they've also made sure that all of their training is available both in English and Spanish. So from the end user's perspective, they've immediately got that extra bit of personalization. They're not looking and thinking, well, this is great, but I have to read it in a second language. It's, it's going to go in, but it's not going to go in in the best way possible. They've also done that in relation to their policies as well. So any policy attestation is also available in the two languages as well. And what they've done to take it one step further, which I know a few of you who work with us on the e-learning side as well will also have done, they've also customised the training. So they've looked at it from a perspective of, we've got the off-the-shelf content, this is a good basis for us to work on, but how do we make that more and more relevant to our business, our industry and our staff? They take into account feedback from end users as well. So one of the questions earlier was about how do we, um, you know, as compliance colleagues, how do we make sure that we're essentially not just acting as the stick, but also the carrot to engage people into their training. Fresneo are a really good example of this, where they've taken the feedback from learners and said, OK, well, we know that you have to do training year on year. So what we'll do for those who have you know, sufficiently shown us that in the past you've got a high enough pass mark on this particular piece of training. We know that from a regulatory perspective, you still need to make sure that we've got these particular boxes ticked. So we'll give you an attestation, but we'll give you a reduced version of the content. We'll give you an assessment instead of having to take the whole course. And it just, you know, it rewards the learner in that sense that they are getting a bit of their time back and it shows that their opinions are valued as well. So from that perspective, we're increasing engagement and taking away that road blocker as well. One of the key things that I've highlighted here, um, which I'll show now on the next screen, is the um, compliance submissions and declarations. So the particular um, tool that Fresneo use with us, which I wanted to focus on for the latter part of this presentation today, is our conflicts management questionnaire, which is the CMQ just down here. So the conflicts management questionnaire um, is something that's relatively new for Fresneo. They've been using it for the last 12 to 18 months or so. But it's something that, interestingly, in conversations that we've had with them, they've found that it's just made their life so much easier. I'll show you quickly on the next screen um, a quote, which I'll read out in just a second, from um, their compliance manager, who's one of our key contacts, a lady called Erica. When I had a conversation with her around, you know, how were they finding the new tool, just checking in and seeing how everything was for them, she gave me this really valuable piece of information which she's allowed me to share with you today, which is great. As you can see on screen, we previously did the declaration of conflicts of interest manually on paper. Now that we've done so through Skillcast, it's easier and more efficient, both on the administration, concentration of information, as well as, as, well as consultation and follow-up of responses of our personnel to be able to analyse the information they provide for us and solve those red flags that are identified. Now, on the next screen, I've got this quote again, but I just wanted to break that down into a little bit more detail. The roadblocks that we saw earlier around time, or rather lack of time, both from the end user's perspective and the administrator's perspective. Um, inconvenience and complexity, having to access loads of different systems at once to basically get you know, the, same, the same sort of information. Um, regulatory changes and how you deal with those and how you can deal with them quickly, importantly as well. Cost as well and also lack of engagement. I think this highlights um, this is in the context, obviously, specifically of the um, conflicts management questionnaire, but I think this highlights both the usefulness of particular tools to meet requirements, but also more widely how you can put that in the context of the roadmap. This is just one part 
of their roadmap in making sure that all of the um, requirements around their code of conduct, that they have everything in place. So you'll see here, we previously did the declaration of conflicts of interest manually on paper. Immediately, the administrators and the end user themselves have been able to save time. The administrators no longer have to manually send this out to people, chase them to complete it. The system can do that for them. Additionally, from the end user's perspective, they're not having to remember to do that if they've not completed it. They'll get chases if they haven't completed it. But then also at the same time, everything's in the same place for them. So they can look at that and say, oh, well, holistically, I understand now that this relates to this, this relates to this, and this forms a better picture in my mind. It gives me much better understanding and grounding of how important this code of conduct is to both me and the business. The next section that I've highlighted, it's easier and more efficient both on the administration and concentration of information. Again, we're taking away that roadblock of the ease of access and complexities. We're removing that issue from the, from the equation and just making things as efficient as possible. And you'll see the next um, section that I've highlighted is kind of easy identification of risks. So they can see the consultation quickly, they can follow up, they can identify any red flags and analyze them as soon as possible, which is really, really valuable information for them. And ultimately what this does is obviously allows them to solve those red flags. But an additional benefit of that is that it has a direct cost impact on the business. Because they can identify those red flags quickly and efficiently, it means that they're not having to risk, you know, they can mitigate that risk. They are not having to potentially face, you know, huge regulatory fines for areas of risk that they'd have missed. This is obviously in the context of conflicts of interest, which is really very, very important and relevant for them. But these kind of scenarios and these kind of contexts can be kind of relevant across the board. You know, we're, we're obviously speaking here about the impact that it's had on Fresneo directly. But I'm sure that many of you would agree that with the Swiss cheese model and having, you know, those stops that are mitigating any of the gaps and any of the risks of things flagging through there, it just makes everything a lot more efficient, which ultimately will have a, a direct cost impact quite frequently as well. And on the last slide here, I've just got a quick summary, um, again, conscious of time here. So I've just got a really quick summary of the um, impact of effective road mapping. So We've seen in the case study of Fresneo, and I'm sure that many of you will have seen something similar, we've got a better retention and understanding of key changes, much greater convenience, both for the end user and the administrator, a reduction in risk profile as well. Everything is easy to access. It makes sense for the learner. So holistically, they've got a much better understanding. Cost efficiencies as well, which we've touched upon, and also the education and empowerment. And I think that's a really powerful point that we've kind of touched upon earlier in the questions um, around, you know, how do we make sure that as compliance, we're not just constantly being the stick that beats the user to say, you need to do this, you need to do this, we need you to tick this box. I think education and empowerment is a really, really great tool to facilitate that. And there's a number of ways of doing it. And I think having a really effective compliance roadmap in place, regardless of the actual regulation or initiative that you're trying to achieve, is just a really, really good way of exemplifying that and making things as easy as possible for, for everyone all around. And on the last slide here, I'd just like to kind of highlight that if anybody has any um, particular areas of interest around our road mapping, what we've done is put together a few blog posts, which you can see at skillcast.com slash transform. What we've done there is taken a few pieces of key regulation and kind of put together an idea of how you might want to map your own regulations, what tools you might want to bring in, what other things you can think about, just to kind of give you, give you some examples there. And if you have any questions or anything, I'm more than happy to answer those now as well.